Hello, so today I'm going to be showing you how I go about painting an Armada spaceship. There's a lot of other good tutorials about painting available on YouTube, but relatively few of them about Armada itself. So we'll go through the steps on my painting my new Interdictor Cruiser, and hopefully that'll be of use to you. So the first thing to me to do is sort of plan out exactly what I want to do with this model. Um, I've got one of my other members of the fleet here, a Victory Cruiser, which turned out very nicely, and I kind of want to match it close to that while also emphasizing different elements of this model. So um, we've got the long wedge shape of the Star Destroyer type chassis, that's going to take the green just fine. It's going to have the gold trim along the sides just like this one does. Um, I think what we're going to do is we've got the two-tone greys here and we're going to put the light grey on the long diagonals and then the darker grey on the uh, gravity well domes here. Um, this is going to take the, the dark green again and these two little recessed dips here, they seem to be perhaps the uh, shield generators, so they'll take the little white patches again. We've got the aerials, they can be picked out with grey, have uh, little gold elements throughout, and that should turn out just fine. So we're going to start with painting up uh, with the angel green for the main hull colour, and for that we simply pour some into our palette. It needs uh, quite a lot because this is going to cover the big majority of the model. And then we also need to thin it because that will uh, help it move over and cover it more easily. It will cover it with a thinner layer so it's not obscuring details or filling in little cracks because uh, we want to keep all the detail of the model. So we get some water from our brush and mix that in. And, uh, quite a bit because we've got a lot of paint here. And then we can just go straight, straight ahead and start applying it to the model because with the Armada models, they're, they're effectively already based by the paint that's come on the uh, the model that it comes with. So we just like, go ahead and put them. Now, of course, for the edges here, they're going to receive some gold like the Victory Destroyer does. Um, but we can put that over the top of the green and that will cover it as long as we put it on uh, nice and thick. sort of uh, what goes on. I can move that to further up the model. And this will just take a few minutes and we'll sort of get it all the way up here along these primary areas. Now I'm going to be doing the sides. I do not paint the underside of my model because they're not visible during the game uh, on the game table. Um, you can if you want to. That's uh, entirely up to you. There we go. Now, depending on how much you, you water you paint down, you may find you want a second layer on to uh, to ensure that it fully covers the darker patches of grey. But we'll sort of see how that turns out when it dries and work out whether it needs it or not. But as you can see, the green is covering up the grey very nicely. If I were to try this with uh, with something like yellow then you would have to pre-base it with a white instead and then blend up towards the yellow. There we go, so making sure it gets in all the little, uh, the little cracks that of course a good Star Wars model has. They do have very busy looking hulls. Now what you'll see as this is all going on is that of course you're losing a little bit of the detail because with a light grey uh, the natural shade and, and darkness of the model means that all the uh, the little cracks are very visible. With, uh, with a darker green like this they're much less visible but we're going to highlight them again by applying uh, a shade or an ink as they used to be called and that will make sure that we don't uh, we don't lose the visibility of all of these little uh, these little elements on the hull and make sure it keeps looking like a, like a star destroyer there we go just put that at the sides there There we go, 
just having a little look at the back here. I mean, realistically, this will, this will all get turned green. I'll probably leave the engines as they are. They're absolutely fine. So I'm going to spend a few minutes finishing that off. And as you're doing this, you may find there are areas that got a little bit too much paint on them, but it's obscuring the detail. So just go ahead and scoop that paint up off those areas with your brush and apply it then to the areas that still need a little bit more instead. There we go, because we don't want the paint too much paint to dry on those areas. So we go ahead and clean that off. Okay, so we've got our first block colour applied to the ship now, and uh, as I was doing that I noticed that the bridge has this interesting little wedge feature uh, all around the centre of it, which I decided I'd keep. So to highlight that I've left it in the grey and I'm going to sort of decide what colour I want that uh, as I go along. So we're going to let the paint dry now, and then once it's dry we're going to sort of look at any areas like I think around about here for instance, they're going to look a little bit like the colour isn't sort of saturated fully, and um, we're going to dab on another um, thinned down layer of green on top of that. So that will make the colour nice and consistent throughout. If you try and do it in just one coat, generally you, you sort of either have brush strokes in the, uh, in the paint, or uh, you'll have patches where it isn't, uh, it isn't very uniform. So that will help avoid that. Okay, so I decided I wanted the gravity well generators to really pop on this model. So I've decided that rather than just having the two tone of grey, I've gone ahead and made these raised deck chevrons the uh, a full on black, and then that will let me keep two different colours of grey for the gravity well generators themselves. And as you can see, there's a really strong contrast there. There's no mistaking that this is an interdictor. It doesn't just look like uh, another star destroyer or victory star destroyer. So we're going to go ahead and. Put this on fairly carefully. The nice thing is, is that all the detail on the model, sort of like these little raised gravity well generators, they guide your brush around them, so they help you be careful. And when you get to the edges here, we're going to sort of very delicately apply it, kind of dabbing down into that uh, that little ridge there, for instance. So that will just take a little bit of time to do. Now to make sure that the paints don't mingle when you're doing along here, it is best to wait until the first colour of the green has dried before you start doing that, because otherwise it'll it'll only sort of cause you some difficulties. It might require a little bit of touching up, but it's not going to be anything too disastrous. Okay, so we've got the, the black done as well there. I'm just uh, drying my brush on my paper. And yeah, there's still a few little areas around here, for instance, where the green needs a little bit more to it so I can get some of that, just uh, thin it back down again because it's dried up a little bit while it's been sat up in the sat in the palette. And there we go. Giving us a nice consistent colour on the bridge here. Now it's okay if this still looks even just a little bit patchy because Now it's okay if this still looks just a little bit patchy when you're done with the colour because when we apply the ink that is going to blend it in a little bit as well there. And I've just noticed at the back here, you want to got a little bit in between the bridge neck and the rear panels that we want to get in there. So now I'm ready to start applying the gold trim uh, down the diagonal sides. With the gold, this is actually one paint that I'm not going to be thinning down because we want it to go on uh, extremely thickly to make sure we get full coverage uh, over the green. So we can go ahead. I've switched down to a smaller paintbrush for this one because this is more delicate work as well. And we're just going to go ahead and let the lines guide us and start putting that on. There we go. Now 
Now with the with the gold, this is going to require, likewise again, a couple of coats, even with the un, unthinned paint. And when we do that, we're probably going to also need to um, clean it up on either side, to uh, for where we go over into the green hull sections. But we'll do that as delicate as we can to minimise how much we need to do that. There we go, so that's starting to go on there. And that will really pick out the, the shape of the hull. What I'm considering is that this model actually has a second inner hull section line on these. So I'm I have a little think about whether I want to pick these out in gold as well or not. We'll uh, we'll see how it looks with the the main lines on first. Oh, okay, so we've got the gold stripe down the side, and now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, remove these little bits where I've brushed over into the wedge. That's starting to look nice and striking. And so now we're doing a second coat of the green, so to even that all out really nicely, make sure it's not patchy. And with this second coat, we're going to blend it down with quite a bit more water, so it's quite a bit thinner than the first coat was. The first coat was about getting coverage, now we just want to even it all out. Anytime you get a little mistake like this, you can just uh, use your thumb, wipe it off. There we go, so I keep doing that. It's dried, we're going to put a wash of green over all the green areas, and that will sort of nicely even it out. It'll give it a, a richer tone. Um, should look really good. So I've got a Citadel wash, Thraka green. That's going straight on. And this you just load your paintbrush up, apply it straight on. It's uh, fairly translucent, so you don't need to worry about going over another area. You can just sort of slap it straight on there. It's only when you're putting a, a darker wash onto a lighter colour that you uh, you need to be careful. In that situation, you might thin it down really quite a lot and be be much more careful in applying it. Now the wash is very liquid, so it will run straight into cracks, which is actually part of the idea because that will then uh, emphasize those those little details and features. But what that does mean is that some areas will have their uh, will lose their wash very quickly and sort of dry out a bit too quickly. They won't get any uh, texture as a result. So if anything like that happens, like a little bit around here, just go ahead and uh, dab a little bit of extra wash on there so you can uh, suck some up from pulling in the cracks and uh, go ahead and apply it to those areas. 
And now I'm going to pick out this little communication antenna looking thing on the top uh, with silver to sort of highlight that. Because that's a nice little extra detail on this model that I think could use some emphasis. And I got a little bit too much paint on my brush, so I'll just uh, go ahead and wipe some of that off. Because otherwise it's just going to spread way too quickly. There we go. Now with something like this, I'm just sort of brushing it gently across the top. Because I don't want to fill in, fill it in too much. So that's, that's that bit done. Okay, and now that the uh, <coughs> model is, is dry in most of the parts, we're going to pick out some of these little details with gold, and that will uh, just sort of add some interest to the, the surface of the model, avoid it looking flat in any way. So we're just sort of picking random little, little bumps all over the model to go ahead and dab some gold on top of and again we're, we're not uh, we're not diluting the gold in any way we're not thinning it out because we need it to just sort of rest on top and fully cover in ideally a single a single dab <coughs> there we go so these these are just sort of turning out very nice we don't want it to look too busy, we're just putting one here, one there, around the plates. There we go, so that's starting to starting to get the uh, the effect we're looking for there. Well, okay, so we got it pretty much looking how we wanted at this stage. Um, now one area I did have a little slip up was uh, that when I was picking out the aerial here in silver I slipped over onto various portions of the the grey around the bridge so I've gone over it in my own grey now which I, I quite like because that means it's a different grey to the two tones on the Gravwell domes and what I'm going to do now is to, to recover the uh, the image of you being able to see the scene down the middle and also give some depth to the uh, the aerial recession I'm going to put some dark ink on it now you might use Games Workshop's, uh, I think that's called Null Noil, uh, but I've got Dark Tone from Army Paint, so that's a quick shade, that's the same as a wash basically, so we're going to go ahead and put that on. And this is, now it's all dry, so yeah, that just slaps straight on there. It looks uh, very dark going on. That's going to seep into all the cracks and just pick them out really nicely for us. And that way we won't have lost any of the model's uh, detail. And we'll recover all of that. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm also going to put a little bit on these two uh, shield projector looking things. And that'll darken them up a little bit. Um, and I think I'm actually going to put some on the, uh, the grav wells as well just specifically on the on the top here just to uh, just to distinguish them a little bit we'll see if we like that if I don't I can always I can always just sort of repaint them over with a light gray after all now on the internet um, a few people have been painting there uh, interdictors with really really effective um, bright colors on the top of their gravel generators but to be honest painting in very light colors is, is uh, requires some different skills which I, I don't feel super confident with so I'm just gonna see if darkening these up will 
instead uh, produce an effect that we like. So now that's on all of those, we're just going to let that dry and see how it looks and see if we feel like we're done. Okay. Okay, and I'm pretty sh happy with how the uh, interdict has turned out, and I'm basically going to call that done. So I'll uh, show you a couple of pictures of the finished article, and uh, thanks very much. Hope that's of use.